The Swift language comes with many pre-built data types and functions that you can use in your own apps to solve a variety of common tasks called the Swift Standard Library. You can think of the Swift Standard Library as a big box of books filled with code that you can use in your own apps. In fact, you've been using many elements from the Swift Standard Library already. The data types int, double, string, and bool are all part of the Swift Standard Library. The print method you use to print a message to the console is also a part of the Swift Standard Library. When you're developing your own Swift apps, you'll frequently want to use elements in the Swift Standard Library rather than reinventing the wheel. But it's a big library, so how can you know what's available? Luckily, Xcode comes to the rescue. Xcode comes with detailed developer documentation of every single class and method that you can use in iOS, including everything in the Swift Standard Library. You've already used the Xcode documentation once, back when we researched how to round a double value to the nearest integer using double's rounded method. In this exercise, I'll show you how you can use the Xcode developer documentation to take a tour of what's available in the Swift Standard Library. Then, we'll use it to look up how we can get a random number, which you'll need to generate the random target value for the user to aim for in Bullseye. Note that the Swift Standard Library and its documentation may seem a little bit overwhelming at first, and some of the explanations and syntax might not make total sense to you yet. That's okay. For now, the important thing is that you just understand that the documentation is there and the general process of using it. Okay, I already showed you how to get to the developer documentation in one way. Remember how I showed you how you can pick something and you can option click it to see more information about what that is and open in developer documentation. Well, another way, if you just want a general survey poking around for yourself to see what's there, is you can go to help and developer documentation. And it's actually pretty nicely organized in terms of the major sections of uh, what you can do with iOS development. There's a section on Swift UI, there's a section on Swift itself. Later on in this learning path, you're gonna learn about a lot of other aspects of iOS development, such as core data or messages or core motion or so on. But to find information about the Swift Standard Library, you want to load up the Swift section. And you can see there's a little heading here that talks about the Standard Library and a section uh, that gives an overview of what's in the Standard Library. Let's start with that. So you can see here how the Swift Standard Library defines a base layer of functionality for writing Swift programs. And that's where these data types we've been using in our app so far actually reside, such as int, double, and string. Later on in this learning path, you're gonna learn about some collection types or data structures, such as array, dictionary, and set. Print, which we used earlier, that actually is part of the Swift Standard Library, and there's a lot more. So you can kind of poke around in here and, and find out about things you're interested in. And if I expand this, you can see it's pretty nicely organized in terms of here's the data types um, with, for numbers and other basic values. Here's more information about strings and text. Here's all the collections I mentioned. And then it also, breaks things down in, in terms of tools or behaviors that you might want to use inside your apps. You can kind of peruse this and get an idea of um, what might be interesting to you. But we know we're looking for a random value, and we know we're, in particular we're looking for a random integer. So a good place to start would be values and collections, numbers, and basic values, and we find integer. And now we're at that page, and like we did before, we can scroll through here and find if anything might be interesting to us. So you can either scroll through and look, or you can just hit Command F to search, and we'll just do random. And sure enough, there's a whole section on creating a random integer. And this first option here says returns a random value within a specified range. That sounds perfect. If I click that, then it tells me how it works. And there's even a handy discussion or example down here of how we do this. And it says int.random, and in parentheses it says in one, two, up until not including 100 in this particular example. So that's actually really close to what we want, except we do want to include 100 in our case. So now we can go back to our content view.swift now that we have an idea of what we want to do here and what's available using the developer documentation. We can make a new state variable and it's going to be a variable named target and it's going to be an integer type and we want int.random which we just read about and the range is going to be 1 up into including 100 just like that. And so now Instead of having a hard-coded value here of 100, we're going to use the string interpolation you, that we learned about earlier to put the actual target value in there. So 
Again, how do you do string interpolation? You put a slash and two parentheses, and inside you put whatever you want to appear at that point in the string, and we want self.target. All right, so let me build and run. Okay, so notice that this time it is 73. And just to prove you that it's random, I'm gonna stop this and run it again. Every time you start, it should get a new random value, and this time it's five, great. Remember that when you're learning iOS development, you don't need to memorize every single thing you can do. Instead, you just need to focus on learning the general concepts and what's possible. And then you can always refer to the documentation when you inevitably forget things. As you progress through our learning path and you learn more about iOS development and Swift, the documentation will start to make a lot more sense. And you'll eventually get to the point where you can use it to refresh your memory on everything you've learned in this course and even start striking off into new things on your own.